Went. Stacey, and uh, today is MCK Friday, and I'll be joined by uh, two chiefs today. In the second part of the show, uh, Chief Carl Horn will be joining me. Uh, but first off is uh, Chief Lloyd Phillips. Welcome to the show, uh, Lloyd. Ah, good to be here. Uh, lots of updates, I hope. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, actually, I'm just here to you know, my cover off on a, on a few different issues, but we just have a, a general discussion, and we'll sure. see where it leads. So um, you were recently at a meeting with the AFN in Vancouver, is it? Yep, I, I went. Uh, a very quick meeting. I was I flew on Sunday. I was back on Tuesday. So wow. <laughs> I had uh, one day in uh, in Vancouver, and uh, I was asked to attend um, uh, an AFN uh, executive committee meeting, which is basically one representative uh, per region uh, who sits with the national chief and the regional chiefs to go over various topics that uh, are I- impact the entire you no know, uh, First Nations uh, across the country. Uh, so as I sent up a card, the regional chief of Quebec asked me to to attend, and uh, I accept it. Uh, as I've been to a few over the past few years, and but this one was interesting because uh, it was one of the topics for discussion was the um, as you heard a lot about the rights recognition yes. framework, which has been uh, uh, bounced around in, in various political circles for for some time. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a controversial issue. It's it. Uh, you know, on uh, one hand, uh, Canada is saying we want to adopt legislation to recognize Aboriginal and treaty rights, uh, which may sound good on the surface, but at the same time, as they're saying they want to create legislation, they're also putting a box around those rights. Ah, okay. You know, and so it's still a, a limitation of, of some sorts. They, you know, they may be exp- trying to expand in certain areas in, in their mind, but at the same time, like I said, they're, they're, it's, 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 it's limited in uh, what... Uh, an Aboriginal right or treaty right, inherent right, w- would be. Uh, and certainly, uh, coming from uh, a Ganawagi perspective, uh, or Wonk perspective, Iroquois perspective, it's like, you know, we're basically coming from the sovereignty perspective, saying this is this is, this is is what is, uh, uh, what we view as, as our rights, it's a full box of rights, as we call it, you know, and sure, there's been things that happened over the years that, that uh, uh, minimize our ability to, to exercise that uh, that sovereignty and that authority, but we never gave it up. We always maintain it has been there, and it's a matter of just pulling back the the uh, uh, the peels of this onion, right, to get back right. to the core, right. And 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 there's no way we want to have any legislation that's gonna again box that in. Uh, actually, Ross Montour and I went to a meeting in September in Ottawa where we we voiced uh, very strong opposition to this legislation, and 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 that also created like some uh, other communities to to, to do the same. Uh, uh, and the momentum built. You no, know, uh, Gunawage was 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 part of that momentum, uh, among 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 others. Uh, but then now to get uh, a strong position, which was developed from the First Nations within uh, within the Quebec area, as well as within the Iroquois Caucus, who who have very similar opinions to us. You know, to be, had the opportunity to sit directly with um, the national chief of the AFN, Perry Belgard, and the regional chiefs, and and tell them directly, you know, what, where we're coming from. Uh, I think it was a very good opportunity, and this that alone was worth the trip, trip going down yeah. there. And after some round of discussion, uh, a position did come out of AFN that was very clear, uh, which opposes the rights recognition framework uh, that we're asking for it to be halted, to be stopped, and 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 re-engage uh, in, in a different way with First Nations and take into consideration the vast differences across the country. Uh, so there is an official position of opposition by the AFN, which I think is, is good. Uh, however, I think the fight's not completely over because actually on Monday morning, we heard uh, Minister Bennett was saying, okay, we're going to put it on hold and we're going to have to reassess. By the afternoon, she says, no, we're, we're continuing, but we're listening. So what that wow. means, who knows? But uh, at least the the, the positions are, are being are, are much clearer across the country. And it was even in September, October, it wasn't really clear where does the AFN stand on all this, and uh, you know who's speaking up in opposition. But now, now at least that part is clear, and uh, it, it forms a strong basis for other First Nations to really get on board and really find out what this is all, all about. Because it's uh, it's the way it's crafted. You know, it, it sounds very good. And if you're looking at, at, at a quick glance and, and a lot of communities who are smaller, uh, who are worried about more of the day-to-day 
issues in their communities, such as housing and clean water and stuff of that nature. They really don't have time to, to really invest in and analyze in various legislation that's out there. And so, you know, we're fortunate we have many communities in our area that have that ability to do so. Uh, as well as, you know, we have a lot of people out there who uh, who are, the, I guess if you want to call them the critics of, of, of many councils and things that councils do. But in this case, no, we're, we're on the same page because we, we see the danger like 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 other people do, and uh, we'll do whatever we, we can to ensure that this legislation is is um, is stopped uh, and and modified in, in a way, or or maybe not even no really legislation, but modified in a, in a, in a way that, that allows uh, us to continue to exist the way we have you know, from, uh, for hundreds of years yeah. or thousands of years. You know? Because I guess one of the things I wanted to ask, do you find that people, uh, First Nations communities across the country have changed a little bit? Because I'm, I'm going to go back like 20, 25, I probably could go back a little bit more than that. It seemed like we were like polar opposite in terms of our opinion and how we handled, you know, mm-hmm. our communities and all of the people from the Iroquois caucus were kind of the same kind of thinking. Yeah. But when you go out West, it's like a whole other world. And it was shocking, you know, at, at the health levels I can speak about mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. education. And I wondered, have you seen a, a, a shift or at least a little bit more understanding? Because back then it was either or. There yeah, was no I, middle ground around you know yeah like you oh no i've been around the block a couple of times yeah. and, uh, and, but uh but the shorter answer to your question is yes because okay. if you go back you know uh 20 years ago 25 years ago even maybe even 10 years ago where uh you know people were many communities are only talking about programs and services absolutely you know, yes. how much money do i get uh, what's the, what's the the the, the parameters of, the, of this program and that that was the type of the discussion where you no know, we want to talk about our, our rights and Aboriginal rights, inherent rights of things of that nature. So more and more, that's the dialogue at these at these national meetings. Not so much the programs and services. Let right. that leave it up to the communities to decide how they want to administer stuff. Don't bring it up to the national level where we take 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 the agenda arguing over you no know, dollars and cents. What we should be debating over there or, or bringing forward is common positions on on jurisdiction and and, and, and our rights and 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 no enforcing the government's hand on that. And I've been seeing more and more of that lately. And a matter of fact, this, uh, in the past year or so, um, the uh, organization in Saskatchewan, it was, it was Federation of uh, Sask- uh, Saskatchewan Indian Nations. And matter of fact, they just changed their name recently to uh, Federation of Sovereign Indian Nations. Very you know, interesting. So, 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 so there I mean, is some I mean, change. Even yeah. like some, some, uh, it, may, it may just seem like words or whatever, but I mean, behind it, there's a, mo- a lot more uh, philosophical thinking and more, 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 more principled thinking that they're, again, looking at it from a higher level. Well, it's good to hear because at least there's that shift then maybe we can come more together. Well, because, and that's, you know? what, that's what caused a rift between Gunawaga and many First Nations yeah. over the years because, uh, you know, we got criticized and said, well, Gunawaga, you're just looking at you no know, jurisdiction and stuff, uh, you know, and but we're worried about you no know, clean water and we're worried about, you know, housing, which is valid and I, and we, yeah. we, we could and we could agree. But, uh, again, on a national stage, is that where you need to have that discussion? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, any other topics that you wanted to update some of your files or? Well, maybe maybe just one one other one. Again, this touching on on the meeting uh, that was held in Vancouver, but it also it's a, it's, it's a local issue as well. Um, the uh, the legislation that um, uh, Romeo Saganash, the uh, member of Parliament from uh, from um, I'm not sure uh, what area is that again. Shefferville area. Yeah. I can't remember the exact name of, of the, his riding, but anyways, Shefferville area. He's, he's a native guy. He's a Cree. Uh, he introduced this this bill that uh, basically has a unqualified uh, support by the Canadian government to accept the Declaration uh, on the Rights of Indigenous People, uh, which which kind of it kind of forces the hand of of, of the uh, current Liberal government because they said they're going to do that, but we've seen their actions are not always what what they say and they're, again they're still trying to limit it and what he's trying to do is open that door wider to say no it's a full un, unfeathered recognition uh, and that was introduced in, in into the house and it, it's moving along slowly there are people trying to you know stall it and whatever so that was something they were saying that from again that's something a good example on a national level if you can get 
people from across the country to be supporting that, yeah. you know, pushing and lobbying and, and, and contacting senators and MPs or whatever to be say, this is what we need. This is the, uh, a starting point. You know, the buzzwords out there, reconciliation and so on, they've been shown, which I'm, I'm getting tired of hearing that word now, to be honest with you. But <laughs> that's the words that they want to use. Well, this is a way to start reconciliation. Yeah. Don't try to, again, take the UN uh, declaration and, and minimize it. No, expand it and Absolutely. build on it, you know, and, and let each nation decide what's the best way forward for them. Don't try to put us in, into an expanded Indian Act. Absolutely. Because it seems like they're recreating or trying to re-create or re-bring, introduce that legislation. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, everybody, you know, most people will say the Indian Act is, is, is a horrible document. It's been, you know, many reasons. But what we don't want to see is somebody say, okay, well, we'll take the same concept of Indian Act. You know, let's make it. A little more broad, a little more, a little more lingual to it, and maybe a little more authorities or whatever, and then hoping, hoping that First Nations will take that, and and where they say no, that's not going to work. Well, we hope not, but for some communities, the reality is so different than ours. You know, we have leadership, we have support, we have a lot of different things that some other communities just don't have. So throw mm-hmm. a few bucks at them, and it looks good. Yeah, exactly, and and. Uh, that's that's something again like even like council and you know, sometimes we get criticized and wow why are you involved with the afn or why are you doing this and that no there's pros and cons to it but for me who i've been to many of these meetings for the most part the reason why we're there is to ensure that our voice is heard and and that the uh, position of of people with like-minded in for in first nations are heard and it's not all about you know like I said dollars and cents yeah. and, and worrying about programs and services yeah. because it's very easy to get sidetracked you know when the government chose you know a uh, uh, hundred million dollars on a table for first nations to divvy up and then then you're fighting over formulas and Absolutely. who gets what and how much and whatever and and it's it's almost like a tactic in my opinion because you're fighting over health dollars but when you break it down Hundred million sounds like a lot of money, but break it's it across not. the country among six hundred and thirty four communities and then populations and you're talking not much money for for something. No. Uh but that takes the agenda from away from having the, um, a major discussion on Absolutely. other issues. Absolutely, you know? because it, it's kind of the same thing that the Indian Act did was divide and conquer. Mm-hmm. And and by doing this, and I think um, the land across the country basically showed that, you know, because of the different needs. So it was easy to just throw a bone and then have everybody, you know, go for it. Hence, moving forward, I think a lot of the communities are getting much smarter on and not believing what government's saying. Yeah, you know? exactly. And even though, like, even like the liberal government, they first came in, they made a lot of great promises and said a lot of right words. And then you took away a grain of salt and listened to fine. You're saying the right things. But as we always said, no, actions are stronger than words. Absolutely. And the actions he'd been saying, uh, meaning Trudeau, uh, uh, you know, only meet partially of what he's yeah. saying. You know, yeah. and it, uh, he talks about self-determination, which is, a, which is a term we could all agree on. But then he has his version or his interpretation. Versus of our version, yeah, exactly. Right. So, so those are the things that you know we need to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing the envelope. You know, and there's the politics nationally and the politics locally. You know, and then uh, that we have to you know try to make sure that they 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 work uh, they, um, collaboratively as as you move forward. Absolutely. So we coming back to local and let's see what yep. else you have on your plate. Well, uh, lo- locally, uh, no, we're. I'm uh, the lead on the uh, the public uh, safety community safety portfolio. Uh, you know, so we're, we're we're going over all the all the uh, main files. You know, I had several discussions with the you know with the peacekeepers on some of the, the issues that that you know they're currently facing and uh, where you know they could use um, uh, assistance, you no know, political assistance to advance whatever you know they're trying to to accomplish. So. Uh, it's um you know that's 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 always interesting i mean no i don't have any direct say on on how they do their operations but there's always a political element somewhere down the line uh whether it be true dealing with governments dealing with outside laws uh locally now with like a cannabis, cannabis being, i mean being, it impacts them being the, for sure. being uh the one that's front and center right now it's like well you know uh, they need to be clear like well what rules apply in, in the territory and what don't rules don't apply so uh you know that's part of the discussion that we, that needs to happen need to happen and uh and generally speaking i mean even the peacekeepers are saying well we we want to be clear what laws are being enforced and we should have our own gun and law they much enforce rather enforce a gun and law than having to resort to a criminal law um so uh 
know, those are the types of discussion that have, have to take take place. Uh, also dealing with you no know, other like issues locally, uh, even like something is is on a total opposite spectrum of like the dog. By law. law, and that still keeps and, and, coming up. And matter of fact, it, we we had just uh, signed off on a, on a mandate, uh, the scope and intent of the law to go back into the community, uh, go back to um, uh, the CDMP process to to uh, expand upon what area needs to be done and, and to make it make it uh, be more effective, uh, give maybe more authority to the the people who are commonly for the animal control officers or dog catchers as people yeah. call them, but give them some more authority to be able to actually you know. Uh, take action when we need it, you know, and and look at the the level of uh, if there's going to be fines, for example. Absolutely. Uh, no, no, if it, if it's a very very minimal fine and the deterrent is, is isn't as great, so you know whether it needs to be increased or not, we'll see. But but we we had agreed to be moving forward to enter that back into the community for, for community discussion to to see we see where it goes because it's uh, it's been a constant irritant over the over 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 the past few years and now it's about time we we. We get it back in the community to really take a good hard look at it. And I think it's really hard because you were hoping that uh, pet owner's responsibility would be enough to take it. I'm a dog owner, mm-hmm. and my dogs stay in my yard, but I have loose dogs who come harass my dogs on the fence. I have some kids who come harass mm-hmm. my dogs, kick my fence, mm-hmm. and I said, my dog gets out, not even 30 seconds, animal protection's mm-hmm. there. How come no one's picking up these other, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's a real-life situation, you, you know, and uh, you've seen some uh, people still get bitten by dogs in different areas of the community and I was hoping that people would do self-responsibility because yeah, we, we, we had some people raise the issue of like banning pit bulls for example which yeah. has been something that's we've seen across the country in Montreal this had certain certain discussions but that was raised so that's something let's have a discussion in the community uh, is it is it in an effective way I'm not sure I mean I heard you no know, veterinarians and other people's opinions saying like, it's, not even, well, it's, not, it's not even that's not no. the case you know and other no. people saying yes it is so I don't, let's have it. Let's have the discussion. Let's hear the facts, and then find the best the best way forward. To as people jokingly say, to give uh, give the dog law some some teeth. Yeah, you know, really. And let, let it let it uh, be able to be effective, and uh, never get rid of 100. percent But let's at least be able to be um, more in control. Absolutely, because for a while I think we were, and then all of a sudden it just yeah, because it, it went from one extreme to the next. Yeah. Uh, then now now it's and now it's somewhere in the, in the middle. Because if you recall, you know, before, people having a dog on a leash was unseen in our yeah, community. but you, know, you see um, it more 20, often, yeah, yes. 20, 30 years ago, you never really seen that. Now more and more people have a dog on leashes and uh, fenced in and so on, which, which, is, which is a good thing. Uh, but also... How do you balance that off with like? But a dog also has to have some freedom to yeah, run, you know, absolutely. and throw a ball with your dog yeah. and let him run and do. I mean, you can't constantly be on a leash, especially if you have a larger dog. Yeah, you know. So those those are like local things that uh, you know. Sometimes people say, "Well, in, in the big picture, it doesn't really impact the politics." But on, a, on an individual level, I mean, that, does, that, that's what that, that's what I always say because even during the last election campaign, it says sometimes these small issues that may seem uh, petty to some people, but to individuals, that means a lot. Absolutely. So that, that needs to be discussed as well, and it's part of our job. Okay, lots lots happening then. Yeah. Uh, anything else? We have about three minutes left. Yeah, I mean, we could uh, talk about anything. <laughs> talk about anything? Uh, this uh, maybe. Uh, what we put out there. Uh, well, let's, let's let's touch back on on the cannabis again just for a second, because everybody knows the um, uh, the poll was done last week, uh, um, and then the results came out, and uh, you know, uh, slightly in favor. People said uh, the four hundred and I think twenty five people who participated said uh, that they want to look at the uh, they're open to the idea of of retail sales. Uh, there hasn't been a, a great big discussion at council but i mean you have to look at the numbers a little more closely you know strongly opposed strongly agree people in the middle whatever uh but uh, i think what i think is, is there needs to be some discussion definitely on what that means and uh, next steps forward but one thing that you know i think is is unanimous i guess uh, for the most part and I, uh, maybe i could be correct and send me to correct it but we need a gonna walk law yeah we need a law but what that law has to say or what it, what it what it permits it doesn't permit that that That's could be question, that could be, think, be to be debated, right? And uh, it's hard because people, even the, the poll, you see, you know, people say strongly opposed and strongly support. 
they're, they're, they're at polar opposites. Yeah. And, and, and that itself is almost 50-50 within, 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 the, within, the, within the, uh, the pole. So how do you bring the two together? Is that possible to bring the two together? Uh, you know, and then as somebody as an elected representative is trying to find common ground if that's possible. Uh, but also I got my own personal views as well. Absolutely. You know, and, and I'm not a supporter. Yeah. You know, but I'll, I want to hear what the people got to say. Yeah. And, when, and it's even more difficult when you have uh, almost a 50 50 50 split. So, yeah. how, how do you how do you find some way forward? So, you know, I would certainly want to see uh, let's take this. We have to move, definitely, but let's be uh, cautious and know, and, and know where we're heading and uh, to the best as, as our ability because it's, uh, it's, it's a hot topic, really. It was really tricky, too, because with the questions, you know, it's uh, like, uh, I know people who wrote no, and then it says go to the second question, and then they said it yeah. wasn't good because it was spoiled, but if you say no, no means no. It doesn't matter the next question. Yeah, yeah, so, the, I found that very tricky, and I've heard that from I, different I, I, community I heard members. that myself, and, yeah. and, and there was some discussion even at the council table on what the question should or shouldn't be and whatever but no you know there is no perfect question no, right no. and so so it's 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 difficult but uh i heard the same comments people saying yeah. well if i say no up top but then yet you're asking me the second question yeah like it didn't and, make sense but, but i think there was like 40 or 50 people who didn't fill out the bottom part which is fine and 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 their ballot wasn't spoiled yeah if, if it yeah. was you sit up top okay no if the second part if you didn't fill it out it's, it's not going to be not going to be yeah. spoiled yeah, but it's it, it was it's it was hard. it was it's, it's, it's it was difficult. really tricky. I I think most of what I've seen on social media and speaking to a large group mm-hmm. of people, I don't think people have opposition to the law. I I think the question is is what's the parameters once we yeah and, exactly and, I think and, that's and you, the and, you issue. Have, and last time we was here with Hubert Ronda discussing it and it's like you have. People who are still saying in the community, we, need, we said zero tolerance, we still mean zero tolerance. And that's what it, it means. There's and, no... And, and, and there's no if, and, or buts for yeah. them. And you have other people who are saying, it's it no, it's my right if I want to use, if I want to... Even people say, it's my right even if I want to sell. And then we're saying, well... Use is one thing, sell is a whole other ball game. And it's like, but right now, I say, no, it's not permitted, it's not tolerated, it's illegal in our community uh, to, to sell. And until such time as, as things change, if the community wants that, and then, and then we'll, we'll address it. But in the meantime, it's, it's still uh, still illegal. But again, I think it's a strategy on the government's part of how they rolled this out. I, I, I still am a conspiracy theorist on this, you know, yeah. because they had nothing in place, not just for us or, or for provinces, but each place has had something. And it's like people are well, trying yeah, to catch there's, up. There's Education, a, you know. Like, provincial... Are, are different across the province. Yes. Uh, city to city, like Montreal okay. has different rules than they have in Chattagui than they have in Quebec City on, on where people could use or smoke or... or, or yeah. So it's like... It, it, it's 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 creating a heck of a lot of problems because well if somebody lives in Montreal and they're used to certain things but they go to Quebec City and they have different rules in Quebec City, no, it, it doesn't make it, sense. It, you it know, doesn't make sense. No, you know? so that's why I figured it's a strategy. You know, in, in terms of yeah. uh, really discombobbling everybody. You know, <laughs> it, I, I can't help it. Exactly. But that's my and thought. Then, uh, and then there's so many questions about you know like uh, what's permitted in terms of like. How many hours after use are you allowed to do your job, or are you, is it still allowed to say zero tolerance if you have certain jobs in the community yeah. or, or in the country, for that matter? Driving, uh, getting driving, behind the there's wheel. A of, there's a lot of questions out there. You know, I mean, if you're impaired, you're impaired. That's one thing. But how long after you're no longer yeah. impaired can you do certain things? And how long uh, it stay in the system? You know, exactly. It's like, so uh, it's and we haven't been that much educated over the years. You know, uh, on on it. So it was like introduce it now. It's all mm-hmm. fallout. You know? Yeah, exactly. And then like, it's gonna probably gonna unfortunately take uh, a number of uh, very legal actions and court cases and to create some jurisprudence on how things are gonna <laughs> how things are, are gonna play out okay thank you uh lloyd for joining me today i appreciate it and i'm sure you'll be back again yeah anytime we'll take a break and we'll be right back come on to